Hey everyone, I'm Jordy, and this is your guide to the second encounter in Sunwell Plateau, the infamous pit lord, Brutalis. Ah, more lambs to the slaughter! Brutalis is actually a pretty simple one phase fight. He has 10.5 million HP and rages after 6 minutes. With how optimized DPS are these days, you shouldn't have too much trouble hitting that mark. Here is what a well rounded raid composition might look like for Brutalis. Note that we have three tanks here. You only need two tanks for this fight, but you'll want three for other parts of Sunwell, so we kept him in there. All right, let's get into it. Brutalis only has three abilities, but each are critically important to handle correctly, so we'll be covering each in depth. The first, Meteor Slash. Meteor Slash deals 20,000 damage in a cone in front of Brutalis, split between all the players that are hit, and it gives a stacking debuff that increases fire damage taken. This is the main positioning and taunt swapping mechanic of the fight. The second ability, Burn, is a dot that Brutalis will randomly apply to anybody in the raid. It's a 60 second debuff that does ramping fire damage. At first, the damage is pretty minimal, but every 10 seconds it doubles, and the last 10 to 20 seconds is very dangerous. This can also be spread to other players if you move close to them, so positioning is important. We'll cover that later. Finally, Stomp. This is cast only on the current tank, and it deals about 20,000 damage mitigated by armor and reduces the player's armor by 50% for 10 seconds. This also removes any burn debuff on the player. Alright, let's get into the fight. Here is a solid map of what the raid should look like before pulling the boss. This allows for proper meteor slash soaking, as well as positioning everyone far enough away from each other that if you do get burn, you won't immediately spread it to your neighbor. While the Enrage isn't too large an issue with current damage, mistakes in positioning are punished heavily on this fight, and can quickly lead to a wipe. The melee will position on the back flank of the boss, while the burn targets will take the side opposite the melee. The healers should be split evenly between the tank sides, but also positioned in range to heal both tanks. From there, you'll split your ranged evenly, usually by full groups to be in range of group buffs, to help soak Meteor Slash. We prefer the Warlock group here, and the Mage group here. Once everyone's in position, a hunter should misdirect to the first tank who will pull the boss back and turn him to face their soak group. From there, the boss will periodically cast Meteor Slash, splitting damage and leaving a stacking fire damage taken debuff on all the players hit. Each group should never take more than 3 Meteor Slashes or you risk someone getting one shot by the fourth application. Brutalis will also periodically cast Stomp on the current target, reducing the target's armor significantly and clearing any active burn debuff on them. You should always taunt swap after the third application of Meteor Slash, while considering the time before the next Stomp. As always with a fight like this, it's advisable for the next tank to give a 2-3 second warning before taunting so that healers are prepared to swap. Alright, let's get into some specifics about how Stomp works. Making sure your tanks have a basic understanding of when it's okay to taunt is very important to cut down on your wipe count early on. So I'm going to go over a few scenarios that will happen so it's easier for you to know what to do when you're faced with them. Let's say the other tank is tanking Brutalis and you're waiting to taunt. He stomps and then a few seconds later he casts his third Meteor Slash on that side. Then you taunt, not before. Okay, now let's say the other tank eats the third Meteor Slash, but you see that Stomp is coming soon. You should wait a few seconds before Stomp goes out to taunt, so that that tank can eat it and you can taunt it off of him so you don't have to eat the Stomp yourself. Tanks should communicate based on boss mod timers if they will need to tank a portion or all of a Stomp so that the healers can prepare to spam heal them to survive. All right, let's talk about burn. The only other mechanic in this fight is the burn debuff. This will be cast about every 20 seconds on a random raid member, including the tanks. Healers and ranged DPS that get burn should quickly and safely move to the designated burn location so they don't receive another meteor slash application for the duration of the debuff. It's very important that you don't run over other players as the debuff will spread. It's about a three to five yard range and you can quickly cause deaths due to the extra healing requirements. The melee should be able to stay in their normal spread locations without moving, if they position correctly. Burn does ramping damage and will require a designated healer for the last 10-15 to 15 seconds of its duration. 
The final set of ticks deal over 3,000 damage each, so players should be ready to healthstone as well to live. Taking stacks of Meteor Slash with Burn will almost always result to a death. Burn can be removed by Paladin Bubble, Cloak of Shadows, and Ice Walk. If Burn is cast on a tank, it should be cleared by the next stomp that, that they take, but it will require significant healing until then because tanks almost always have stacks of Meteor Slash. Alright, let's talk about tanks. Be vocal. Unexpected taunts will quickly lead to your death and a wipe as Brutalis hits extremely hard and fast. Calling 3, 2, 1 taunting helps healers line up hots and pre-heals. If you will have to tank through a significant portion of a stomp, be prepared to use a cooldown or call for additional healing. And remember, this boss cannot parry haste or crush, so gear accordingly. And for the healers, remember that this fight requires us to strictly adhere to assignments. Drifting healers can quickly lead to deaths as damage spikes are very high. And if you're assigned to heal burn targets, they're going to need that extra attention for the end of the duration of the, the debuff. The last six ticks of the debuff each do about 3,200 damage each, and that's about 20,000 damage over six seconds. And for the DPS, do damage. The only thing that you need to worry about is the burn debuff. If you do get the debuff, quickly and safely move to your designated spot and continue doing damage. And remember, you can bubble, you can ice block, and you can cloak burn. That helps mitigate a lot of the healing. And that's it for Brutalis. Remember, it's possible to kill him after the Enrage if you spread out and keep pumping. The Meteor Slash and his melee swings will mess you up, but if you're just trying to squeak in that last 100,000 damage or so, it's possible to kill him with some good spreading out. After this fight, his blood soaks the battlefield and turns Madragosa's corpse into the undead dragon Felmist, which I'll be releasing the boss guide on in the next few days. If you enjoyed this guide and want to see more of them, definitely hit that like and subscribe button. It helps me a lot. Good luck on Brutalis, and I'll see you guys in the next one.